Okay, we're putting all, all of it together. So composite objects really mean just more than one of those three-dimensional shapes put together. So we're going to calculate surface area and volume of some nice composite objects. So um, taking a look here, surface area and volume of each of the following shapes rounded to the nearest tenth. So surface area to start, so what do we have here? We have a cone and a hemisphere. Okay, we're given the radius of that circle. Okay, so that's also the radius of the hemisphere. And we have the height of the uh, cone. Remember, for a hemisphere, that radius is the same all the way around, just as if it was a sphere. So uh, let's start here with... Um, surface area. Now, the thing to remember that sometimes, like if you just look at the surface area of the cone formula, hemisphere formula, there are some parts of those that aren't exposed to the air. So think about if you were to paint this object, what surfaces you would you be painting? So that circular base of the cone and of the hemisphere is covered up. You don't, it's not exposed, so we're not going to include it. So we want here the surface area of, we call that the lateral face of the cone, and then plus the um, uh, the hemisphere, okay, but minus the base of it. So really, the lateral face of the cone, remember, is pi r s, and the hemisphere is, um, so the hemisphere is 3 pi r squared, that includes the base, so it's 2 pi r squared is the actual curved surface, because the surface area of a complete sphere is 4 pi r squared, so it's half of it. So then now, do we have enough information? Well, we have pi, we have the radius is 6, but we need the slant height, okay? So you're going to have to calculate that. So s squared equals 6 squared plus 12 squared. Okay, so 6 uh, squared plus 12 squared is 180. So s is the root of that. Okay, I'm going to leave it as root of 180 because then it's exact. Okay, plus 2 pi times 6 squared. Uh, get out our calculator and uh, enter this, so pi times 6 times root 180 plus 2 pi times 6 squared, and then uh, 479.1 to the nearest tenth. Okay, so that's the surface area. Then the volume, I'm going to dual page this, just give me a sec. Okay, so now the volume, that is the complete volume, it's the, the space inside, so we don't take away anything. Um, so the volume is going to be the volume of a cone plus volume of a hemisphere. My writing's not great, but it's close enough. So remember, the volume for a cone is one-third pi r squared times the height. Volume of the hemisphere is, uh, so for a sphere, remember, it's four-thirds pi r cubed. So it's half of that. So it's two-thirds pi r cubed. And so here, radius is six. Height is 12. We don't need the slant height. We need the vertical height. Okay, so then get out your calculator. Um, so I'll enter this on the screen that you can see. So 1 divided by 3 times pi times 6 squared times 12 plus... Then the next part is 2 divided by 3 
times pi times 6 cubed. All right, 904.8, and that's centimeters cubed, okay? Um, something kind of interesting here is that what if we asked for the exact value? So this is kind of extra, but take a look. We have pi in each, so we don't. that means really we don't want to evaluate pi. And we have a, a common denominator. So um, what is 6 squared times 12? So 6 squared times 12 times 1, which is, so 432 pi over 3, plus then here, what's 2 times 6 cubed? 2 times 6 cubed is 432 as well. Kind of cool. Um, so 432 pi over 3. So adding those together, there's two of them. So that's what going to be 864 pi over uh, 3. Let's check. Does 864 divide by 3? It does. So 288 pi. And let's check our answer. What's 288 times pi? Oh, I did E. <laughs> uh, 288 times pi, try again, 904.8. Kind of cool, right? So sometimes we might ask you just for the exact value. All right. Okay, next one is, again, surface area. I'm going to go back to my full screen here. Um, so I want to turn that off. Okay, so what do we have? We have, basically it's a dumbbell, right? So we have uh, two cylinders and another cylinder, right? These two cylinders are the same. So take a look, this dotted is the diameter, so the radius is 10. Same in both, the height is 4.5. Uh, so we're going to assume, because most dumbbells, if that was different, that would be weird, right? It wouldn't be possible. So this is 4.5 as well, okay? Um, this is, this we don't need the 15 for these ones. So we have enough for these two, uh, the end parts. And then this cylinder here, that's a dotted line all the way across. So that means the radius is 1.5. So we're going to have a uh, surface area. Um, we have, so this is where there's some parts that are covered up, okay? So, a um, couple ways of doing it. So, we could do two full cylinders and then take away these two covered up little circles, okay? So, that's, I think, what I'll do. So, two times the surface area of the large uh, cylinders, okay? Plus, oh, then minus, sorry, uh, minus the uh, area of the two, so two times the area of a small circle, then plus the area of the small face of it or side of it, that curved part. Okay, so two times, so that's going to be a pi r, actually I'll put, I'll just put the numbers in right away. So it would be different R's. So the radius of the big uh, cylinders is 10. So 2 pi R squared. Um, so pi R, actually there's two of those, okay? Lots of twos. So 2 pi R squared is the uh, circle and the other circle. Then the face of that is 2 pi R, 10, sorry, okay, and i got to go back, back and put a 10 in here. That's a 10 uh, times the height, which is 4.5, okay, then minus the area 2 times the area of the small circles, so that radius is um, pi times 1.5 squared. And then plus 
the small face there, which is 2 pi r, 1.5, times the height of that, which is 50. All right, so I'm going to do this in parts here. So 2 times, and I'm going to get that value. So I'll get out my calculator. So 2 pi times 10 squared, which is 100. You could just put that in, plus 2 pi times 10 times 4.5. Okay, so 9... 9.11.0618, uh, we'll go to two, three decimal places, but keep it in your calculator. Okay, and then minus, I'll go two times uh, pi times 1.5 squared is 7.069. Plus 2 pi times 1.5 times 15. Okay, so 141.372. Okay, so now when we do this, um, I can go back, go 2 times. 911 uh, minus 2 times the 7 plus the 141. Enter on that. So 1949.4. Okay, and that is in centimeters squared. All right, so just make sure that you remember about this part here, right? We had to, that because that's covered up there, right? And notice how I didn't include for a cylinder, I should have the two ends, but it's covered up. So I'm really not including it there or just behind there, right? Okay, and then volume is way easier because um, there's nothing to take away. So I'm going to do a dual page. Okay, and then here for volume, it's uh, two of the big cylinders, so two times the volume of large cylinder uh, plus volume of small cylinder. Okay, so volume of the cylinder is um, pi r squared, so the big ones, that's going to be uh, 10 squared times the height, so called area of the base times the height, uh, and then for the small, same thing, pi times 1.5 squared times the height, which is 15. So this maybe you can do all in once in your calculator. So actually, I'm going to now move that, oops, move that over and then here. So we'll have 2 pi times 10 squared times 4.5 uh, plus pi times 1.5 squared times 15. Okay, that's 2,933.5. And that's centimeters cubed. All right, so now we're going to find the surface area of what, what looks like a brick. So basically, if you were to paint a brick, so sometimes bricks have, have holes in them like this. So we want to paint all the exposed surfaces. So the bottom that you can't see, the in-between part there, um, and then all around. So uh, surface area, think about it as... Say you had the whole brick and then these were drilled out. So what I would do is find the surface area, uh, so surface area of the prism. So that would be uh, two times, um, 
So there's two of each parallel side, right? So two times the front would be uh, 20 times 60 plus two times, say, the side would be, it's also 20 times 60. Oh, sorry, 20 times 20. And then the top is 60 across times 20. So really, we could have done four times 20 times 60, but that is for works for any prism, okay? Then we need to subtract these circles. So there's that part there was drilled out, so was this, and then at the back. So we're really subtracting four times the area of a circle with the radius. So this was a diameter of 10, so the radius is 5. So 5 squared, okay? And then, we, okay, so then we have to sub, uh, add in those cylinder faces inside. So uh, when you look at the formula for the surface area of a cylinder that includes it, two circles. We don't want to do that, just the cylinder side uh, or face. So that's, uh, and there's two of them. There's one there and one here. So plus two times two pi r times the, the height, which is going to be basically the width of this prism, which is 20. Okay, so then you're going to calculate. You can do it all in one, I'm going to do it uh, in parts here. So 2 times 20 times 60 plus 2 times 20 times 20 plus 2 times 20 times 60, which I could have done for, you can do it in multiple different ways, right? But 5,600 and then 4 times pi times 25 and should ring a bell really 4 times 5 squared is 100 so 3.14 times 100 is 314.159 again just keeping a few decimal places just in case I clear my calculator then 2 times 2 pi times 5 times 20 Okay, and so um, 1,256.637. Okay, and then you can, if you have the ability, you can go back. So we can go, all right, 5,600, copy that out, subtract the 315, and then add the that value, and then enter is 6,542 point, now we can round 0.5 centimeter, oh, no, millimeters squared. Okay, so that's the surface area. And then volume, so then I will dual page. Okay, so again, volume's easier. We want the volume of the uh, entire prism. And then minus two times the volume of the small cylinders. Okay, so volume of the prism is going to be 20 times 20 times 60. And then the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height of the cylinder, which is 20. And there's two of them. Okay, so again here, 20 times 20 times 60 is 24,000. And then 2 times pi times 5 squared times 20. Let me just make sure. 2 times another side. Yep. Yeah. And that's... Again, it's a thousand times pi, so uh, 3141.592. But keep it in your calculator. And then 20, uh, so actually, yeah, I'm just going to delete. I'm gonna go there and delete. Uh, so I'm going to go up to 24,000, subtract my last answer, and 20,858.4.
and that would be millimeters cubed. Okay, and then next surface area here. Okay, I'm going to go back to view uh, dual page off. Okay, so again, surface area, you may not need to include all sides, right? So we have a prism with a pyramid on top, and so the base of that pyramid is covered up. The top of the prism is covered up. So um, really you want to think about what sides are exposed. So take a look at the base. First of all, it's not a square base, it's a rectangular base. Um, so we're going to have just one of those rectangles that's 30 by 20. Then we're going to have the front and the back, the left and the right, and then we're going to have Two triangles are the same, the front triangle and the back, and then the left and the right, okay? And for these triangles, we need the slant height. So you can draw it that way. We need to know what that is, okay? And so that forms from the that 90 degree triangle. And then basically we need to know what this slant height is, and that forms a a triangle inside there. Okay, so I'm going to call this S1 and S2. So I'm going to calculate what those are first of all. So S1, so you can tell the this side is 15 and this side here is also 15. Okay, it's half of 30 because that's at the center. So S1 squared equals 15 squared plus 15 squared. It's going to be 225 plus 225, which is 450. So root of 450. You don't have to simplify it, and I wouldn't actually even bother finding the decimal form. Just keep it like that. S2 squared. So this distance here is going to be half of 20, which is 10. So that's going to be 10 squared plus 15 squared. which is 325, so S2 is root of 325. Again, you don't have to simplify it. Um, so in this one, uh, we'll start with surface area. Okay, so the very bottom base is 30 times 20. Plus there's two of the front, which is five times 30, two of the rectangular side, which is 5 times 20. Then plus the triangles. So we'll do 2 times the front triangle. So that front triangle there is has a base of 30, a, a, a height of that triangle, think about the, the net of it, is that S2 that we just calculated. So root 325 over 2. And there's two of them, the front and the back. And then two of the other triangle, which has a base of that triangle of 20. And a height of that triangle is root 450 all over 2. So now when we do these, um, it's going to be 600 plus 300. 10 times 30 is 300 plus 200. I can do some of them in my head. The twos will divide out there. So I'm actually just doing a simplifying question. Those twos will divide out. And really now you can just calculate that all in your calculator. Okay, so 600 plus 300 plus 200 plus 30 square root of 325 plus 20 square root of 450. Enter on that, that's 2065.1 and that's centimeters squared. Right now, volume again, volume's easier. So we're going to go to um, dual page. 
because we don't have to subtract anything in this case. So we basically have volume is equal to the volume of the prism plus the volume of the pyramid. Okay, well the prism in this case it's a rectangular prism. So it's 30 by 20 by 5. Pyramid, remember, is one-third area of the base, which is 30 by 20, times the height of the pyramid, which is 15. Much easier. So that's what? 100 times 30 is 3,000, plus, uh, and this is going to be 10 times 20 is 200, times 15 is 3,000 as well. Okay, so adding those together is 6,000. Didn't even need a calculator. Cool. Okay. And then uh, we have one more to do. Is a part of a um, cone. Okay, so it's been cut off. So we gave you a hint by putting this dotted part up. So what you can do here is find the surface area of the whole cone, basically, and then subtract this cone that's formed by the dotted part, okay? So think about, though, with a cone, normally the formula includes that circular base. So that's good for this part, okay? Then when we subtract, though, um, we're really only wanting to subtract the face of the smaller, and then we add in this circle here, okay? So for the surface area, we're going to have the area of the big base, okay? So area of the big circle, I'll call it, plus the area of the big uh, face, okay, the whole thing. Then we're going to subtract the area of the small face, okay, and then we're going to add in the area of this small circle. All right, so that's going to be pi times 10 squared for the big base. And then the big face is um, going to be uh, pi times the radius times the slant height, which is 14. Then minus the area of the small face, which is pi times the radius of that small part is 3. And the slant height is 5. It's given to you plus the area of the small circle, pi times 3, oops, 3 squared. Okay, so I'm going to do this all in, uh, actually, I'm not. I'm going to do it exactly. That's 100 pi plus 140 pi minus 15 pi plus 9 pi. Because they're all in terms of pi. So this is kind of cool this way. That's 240. 249, or 240 minus 15 is 225, plus 9 is 234 pi. So 234 pi, oh, that's not right, 234 pi is 735 point 1 meters squared. Okay, so rather than entering all of that in your calculator, simplify it. Keep it exact and then calculate the, the uh, decimal form. Okay, so uh, then the volume. Okay, so let's do that uh, on. All right, volume here is again basically the volume of the big cone minus the volume of the small cone. Now, for volume, we need vertical height. Okay, so basically here, there's a triangle formed, or we can do it out here, right? That triangle, okay? So uh, we want to find, well, I'll call it uh, 
H2 for the whole thing, the big one. So H2 squared equals the hypotenuse squared minus 10 squared. I always forget what 14 squared is. So that is 196 minus 100 is 96. So that's root, so H2 equals root of 96. I'm going to keep it exact for right now. Then H1 is for that smaller triangle there, okay? Now, you could also do proportions to figure it out. I'm just going to use Pythagorean theorem, but you can use uh, similar triangles if you wanted to because you know that the hypotenuse is 5 squaring it minus 3 squared. And this works out nicely. H1 is 4, okay? So volume of the big cone is 1 third pi times the radius squared times the height minus the small cone, 1 third pi times the radius squared times the height. Okay, so, I mean, you could even factor out 1 third pi if you wanted to. Um, but this one, I'll probably just put in my calculator. Okay, so uh, 1 divided by 3 times pi times 10 squared is 100 times root of 96. Okay, then uh, cursor out of that minus 1 divided by 3 times pi times 3 squared times 4. 988.3 meters cubed. Okay, and so we're done.